Hey, welcome back. Um, so I have an example here that I've shown to quite a few different classes. And um, even though it's out of scope of what you need to show on quizzes and midterms and exams, um, I still find it kind of a very interesting example to talk about with students. Um, so yeah, feel free to like watch this, uh, but know that um, a lot of the stuff that I cover here is not anything that you need to know to uh, survive ULI 101. Um, it's just there for your own benefit and your own like knowledge and curiosity. Um, I'll try to make sure that I point out exactly the stuff that you know could be on an exam um, and also point out the things that uh, will not be on an exam but you know maybe are just interesting. Okay, so keep that in mind as we go with this example. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is um, creating a timer, a countdown timer, um, using Bash. There's a lot of ways that you can build countdown timers with different programming languages and stuff like that. I don't know if Bash is the best solution for this, and I don't know if my, my approach is the optimal solution for creating a Bash countdown timer. But hey, here it is, and I get to point out some interesting things about um, Linux as we go. So keep that in mind. Um, what I'm going to do over here on my left panel is I'm going to create a new countdown.sh. And the first thing that we always start off with is shebang. And also we learn to comment our code. So there we go simple countdown timer. Okay, so let's start by um, laying out some um, uh, basic uh, requirements for this uh, project. Uh, basically we want this to be accurate but you know not down to nanosecond. You know we just want it to be sort of like within you know milliseconds or whatever. Um, we want it to be lightweight And uh, we're going to take in one argument from the user, and that's going to be the uh, number of minutes that we're going to count down. And uh, we want to display the uh, remaining time in you know minutes slash seconds. Uh, I'm going to show you actually the uh, approach in order to do this. And um, uh, finally, maybe we want some sort of um, alarm at the end. Okay, so keep those in mind as we go with, um, oh, and also one, one more thing, sorry, sorry. Um, error checking. Yeah, because we want to make sure that uh, any input the user is giving us is uh, not gonna be uh, totally, totally out to line. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I'll just get rid of these. You can, you know, refer to the beginning part of this video to remember what we're trying to accomplish here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, make sure that we actually do have an argument. And uh, what we want to make sure is we have only one argument. Um, I can't think of a countdown timer that might have a couple of arguments. Um, I'm not really going for that amount of complexity. Um, so basically the first thing we're going to need to do is um, enter some way of uh, making sure that we have one argument and one argument only and if we don't we want to warn the user and basically exit out elegantly. So uh, hopefully you remember how that works. Um, I'm going to use an if statement over here so I'm going to use a square brackets and I'm going to make sure that I have a lot of spaces um, and the um, the uh, variable that we want to use. Um, take a moment to try and recall which one that is and what it's going to look like. Okay, time's up. It looks like this. Oh, nope, that's wrong. It should look like this. Okay, so um, dollar sign and hash uh, returns us the number of arguments that uh, we see in a script. Okay, now how many arguments do we want? We want one argument only. So let's create a condition um, where something fails and where we exit out of the script. So that's basically going to do that's basically going to be 
any time that the number of arguments is not equal to 1. Okay? So, what's that going to look like? Not equal to 1. Um, I'm using a numerical operator here to just do this comparison. Um, that's the best way that I can think of. But you could also do something like, you know, equal, equal, one, I suppose. If you And that's just going to do a string comparison. It really doesn't matter at this point. Okay, so um, the condition that we get, if this is true, this is going to be an error message. And I'm just going to say something like, uh, please enter a number in minutes. And that's basically it. And I want to make sure that we exit out. So I'm just going to use exit one here uh, for this error message. And I'll make sure that I end that with uh, fi. And uh, what we can do here, I'll just save this. And uh, let's take a look at what we got over on this side. Um, so I've got countdown.sh. Let's make that executable. And I'll just run it now and we'll see what we get. Okay, so, so far so good. Okay, so the next thing we want to do um, is going to, to be a little bit more error checking. Um, now that we know that we have one argument and one argument only, uh, we want to make sure that this is going to be a number that we can use um, because we're going to be performing a little bit of math on it. Okay. Um, so we want to make sure that we're not ending up with some sort of weird uh, character or string or something like that and trying to like, you know, uh, perform math on something like that. It's probably just going to give us some weird behavior that we can't really predict. So let's just do this. Now the way I'm going to do that is um, I'm going to do something very similar to what we talked about in class. So this is, this is containing uh, the argument from the user. And we're going to use grep uh, just to make sure that this is only a number, okay? Um, so let's do this. I'm going to put everything in double quotes just to be safe. And I'm going to contain it between a caret and a dollar sign. So this is going to um, basically cover the entire user input. And what I want to do is make sure that this is a number between 0 and 9. And I'm going to do this, and this is just going to make sure that um, if we have more than one number, that we're going to handle the entire thing. Okay, so that's a regular expression. Uh, we've talked about that before, and hopefully it makes sense to you. And now I don't want any output from the grep command at all. I want that just to be basically happening under the hood because I'm going to be checking the exit code of grep to see how everything performs. And similarly, um, yeah, so basically all standard output is going to be going to dev null, which, as I've said, is kind of like, you know, just throwing it into the trash and forgetting about it. And it doesn't take up any space on the hard drive, and we don't care about it. And we want to do the same thing to 2, uh, which is standard error, okay? Um, I don't care about any of the standard error messages. I'm going to send those to the same place as where we're sending uh, the standard output, okay? So basically stream 1 and stream 2 are headed to the same place which is in the garbage. Now, uh, now that we have the grep command, we're going to be checking the error code or the exit code, sorry, of whatever the grep command is. So let's do that. So I'm going to use if statement over here. I'm going to use my square brackets once again. And um, basically, I want to make sure that this is, um, I want to make sure that this is uh, zero. So zero means positive match. That means we're only using numbers. So anything that is not uh, a zero, I want to raise an error message and I want to exit out. So this is going to look very, very similar to the if statement that we have above. Uh, this time, we're just checking the exit code of grep. And I'm going to use not equal to zero. So anything that goes wrong with the grep statement or the grep command, um, I'm going to throw this error and basically stop doing anything. And this is my error message. I'm going to say, please enter only a 
number, no letters allowed. I don't know. And then we could improve that, but whatever. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fine. And I'm gonna use exit two, and that's the end of my if statement. Okay. So we've done this much. We have a couple of exit codes, uh, one and two. One is no arguments, two is invalid argument. And let me put in exit zero over here so we can just use this to test. I'm going to write this. Let's take a moment just to see what we get. Okay, so countdown, this is working as it should be. And we can see that it's returning one, which is what we expect. Uh, let's give it this. And let's take a look at the exit code. So that's working the way we expect it to. And let's give it a number now. Let's give it one. And let's take a look. So, so far all our conditions are working. Um, so one thing that we're doing is um, we are taking in a number of minutes. Uh, but what we're gonna need to do is actually expand this to the number of seconds, okay? Um, so I'm gonna create a variable over here. Um, I'm going to call it, uh, maybe num sex or something like that number of seconds <clears throat> yes and uh, I'm going to basically use this uh, format um, to do my math so basically if you're using dollar sign and double quotes what it's going to do is um, do math um, in bash all of the arguments um, all the variables are handled like strings um, this is sort of a way that we can make uh, make our numbers behave like numbers. Okay, um, so let's do this. I'm going to use dollar sign one, and that's going to represent um, the argument coming in from the user. And I'm just going to multiply it by 60. Okay, and maybe what I'll do just as a little bit of error checking right now, I'm going to. Um, just echo whatever we get back okay so let's try this I'm going to save I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna use the same numbers before I'll do one and I'm getting back 60 let's do 10 we get it back 600 uh, let's do 134 we're getting back this number I could pull out a calculator but I'm reasonably sure that we're getting the right answer there okay now I get a moment to sort of talk about the approach that I'm going to be taking to solve this problem. Um, right now we have a number of seconds uh, that we want to be counting down to. Or basically uh, we're taking a number of seconds and we want to be counting down that number of seconds to, and then setting an alarm. So there's a couple ways that you could tackle this. Definitely we're going to need to be using a loop of some kind, right? And um, we could be using like a for loop and just counting down and trying to, you know, delay everything by a second. Um, but I think what you would find is um, Bash is not a necessarily a very fast language. It's interpreted, so that leaves, you know, it's not as fast as C, for example. Um, granted, this is not, we don't have huge requirements for accuracy or anything like that. But say if you're going to do a for loop and just be counting down and waiting one second, um, the processing time in between all of those things, um, not to mention how we schedule our you know stuff in the background, uh, we would probably get out of sync with what's actually going on. And the longer the countdown, the more likely that you're going to be out of sync. So by the time you've counted down, you might actually, if you're counting down like a a hundred minutes uh, by the time you get to the very end you might be out of sync and you might actually have counted the equivalent of 102 minutes or 105 minutes so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be setting a time in the future and I'm going to check in a loop um, if we have reached that moment in the future and if we have then we stop and we exit out of our loop um, otherwise we keep going okay um, just bear with me here you'll see what I'm where I'm going with this okay so like I said uh, I'm going to set a certain uh, moment in the future and that's going to be um, our exit condition basically so you know if we're going to wait 60 seconds then I want to add 60 seconds to right now 
and uh, once now plus 60 seconds is reached uh, we can exit the loop and you know that's the end of our script okay so let's set up a second variable over here um, I'm going to name it end time and once again I'm gonna do a calculation so it's gonna look like this and um, the way that I'm going to be doing this is with a substitution or a command substitution right um, let me just show you how that looks I won't worry about that right now um, but let's just set now okay I'm actually not going to be using now for anything um, but I can show you how command substitution works we have basically uh, one way to talk about time that we've talked that we've shown you um, and that's using date okay so if I do something like this and then I'm going to echo now and I'll just get rid of this guy here because I don't think we need it and I'll just comment this out for now so if I run this now um, we're printing out a nice string that we see Monday March 18th at about 534 p.m. whatever uh, you know this, this is this is the time right now um, obviously me trying to parse this and do math on this um, is not going to work very well so what I'm going to be doing is adding a different option to date and this gets us into uh, a very interesting thing well I find it interesting I don't know um, I'm going to use this take a moment um, before I continue um, maybe just pause the video and read the man pages for date and see what you make of this option the plus sign percent s okay okay so hopefully you took a moment just to uh, see what that's going to do and let me explain what you're gonna see here so we get a big long number 155 something 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 this is epoch time okay um, this is a Linux specific way of dealing with time and what this number represents the number represents right now um, but it also represents uh, the number of seconds since January 1st 1970 if I run this a couple times you'll see that we're you know counting up basically um, so this is a very very large number I think it's a, like a 32-bit number but I could be wrong on that no I'm pretty sure it's 32-bit um, we're actually going to be running out of digits bits basically to represent this number in 2038 so um, at some point um, epoch time might start causing some issues especially for some 32-bit systems which might still be in use in 2038 although it's probably unlikely um, anyway so number of seconds um, you know at this moment right now I'm sure you're thinking this is a lot easier to deal with than Monday March 18th at 1734.13 and you're right so that's why I'm going to be using it so let me pop over here uh, we've got now set to this date and maybe what I'll do is I'm going to use now so I'm taking now and I'm going to add the number of seconds and I'm going to leave spaces in between the double brackets um, instead of echoing now I'm going to echo okay so we can just use this and we can kind of make sure that uh, everything's looking the way we want it to oh I didn't really want to there we go um, so let's do this and maybe instead of one minute well we'll start with one minute so let's take a look oh we don't have anything yet so let me make sure that I'm not making a mistake here yeah I know what I'm doing wrong forgot to uncomment out that line okay let's try that again so we'll go over here we'll press this and we're getting something that looks yeah that looks right 
that looks correct. Let's try it with uh, 10, say, 10 minutes. And uh, you can do the math there, but everything seems to be working out just fine. Okay, so now it's time for us to start building our loop. Now, uh, usually what you hear is if you have a defined, uh, you know, end condition, you should be using a for loop. Um, well, time is a little bit tricky, so what I'm going to be using is a while loop for this one. Uh, let me get rid of those debug messages because hopefully we're done with them. Uh, I'm going to clear the screen and then I'm going to build while. Okay, so I'm going to do while here. Uh, I'm going to leave some square brackets and I'm going to go to do here. We're going to do some stuff and then we're going to be done. And then we can just say echo all done. And we'll be modifying that in a second. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so now we need to build a, uh, you know, a condition where we stay within this loop and uh, then we're going to do something inside that loop. Um, so let's start with this. So I think what I'm going to be doing is checking end time and I'm going to be using this. Okay. So while end time is greater than or equal to right now, we're going to stay within the loop. And basically, basically I need to keep running this command um, because you know now keeps changing. So we're, we'll keep running date dash s on this, and it shouldn't be too much overhead. Okay, so while while our end time is still greater than our moment right now, we're going to stay within this loop. And while I'm in this loop, I think what I want to do is, um, you know, echo the echo the remaining time. So what I'm going to be doing here, um, just for now, is calculation, and it's going to be. I should use quotes. Um, it's generally good practice to be putting quotes around uh, any variables and stuff like that. So I'll do this minus date plus s. Okay. And then I'm going to close that. And I'm just going to do this. Okay, so let's make sure that we've got everything. Um, we're basically doing a calculation here and we are taking end time and we are subtracting now. So let's take a look at see what this looks like, okay? So I'm gonna to write to this and I'm gonna get ready to go. I'm just gonna use for one minute, so let's take a look. So it seems to be performing pretty well. Uh, you'll notice that um, this seems to be keeping good time, like it seems like it's you know like roughly a pretty good time. Um, so yeah, so far so good, right? Okay, so there's a couple things that I don't like about this. Uh, first of all, I don't like the formatting. And uh, second of all, let me take a look, let me show you exactly what's going on here. So I'm going to run HTOP over here. And let's see if we can expand this out. Um, so you'll notice uh, the second job here is my countdown.sh and um, take a look at what the CPU is using. The CPU is at 20%, which is way too much for such a simple, simple program as this. Um, so we gotta change that. We gotta fix something about that. Um, so there's a couple things I'm gonna do. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is handle this CPU usage. Um, yeah, so like you can see right now, the, the load has dropped quite a bit. And if I do this again, you're going to see my load on my CPU jump up quite a bit, uh, which is pretty inexcusable. Um, so let's just fix that. I'm just going to control C out of that and then let's get into countdown.sh again. Okay, so why did we have such a big uh, CPU spike? Well, part of it is um, our while condition um, is basically we're spinning through this as fast as we possibly can, okay? Um, we are not idling, we are just running this loop 
incredibly fast. Um, so there's one way around that, and we can use a new tool uh, called sleep. And what sleep will take is a number. Um, I think if you give it one, it's just going to be one second. We don't want to do one second. We want to keep like a little bit of accuracy, right? If I was going to put sleep one second here, um, basically all of the extra time it takes uh, for for my computer to calculate date dash s and you know subtract date dash s from end time, um, all of that would add a little bit of extra time to each one of these iterations of the loop, and we would end up being out of sync. Um, so it's kind of um, you know maybe. I'll start with 0 0.01, so that's going to be 10, uh, 10 milliseconds, right? So basically, we go through the loop, we wait 10 milliseconds, and then we go and check again. So that's going to give us enough accuracy for, you know, like a, a countdown timer for this. Okay, so just to show you what that looks like, um, you can go back and compare uh, my first iteration of this. Um, but let's basically run this again, and let's take a look at HTOP. And so let's see what we can find here. So now you can see countdown.sh is right here, and we're using 4.4 .4 of the CPU, which is still not great. Obviously, like the approach that I'm using is you know not the ideal approach, and uh, feel free to you know improve on whatever I'm doing here but um, at least it's a little better than it is before I'm not seeing all my cores spike by several percent uh, when I run this like dinky little script so uh, let's let's call that uh, fixed for now right so the next issue I have is just sort of um, uh, how this is output I don't want this to be spitting out like a thousand lines uh, for each second. So what I can do here is uh, change my echo statement. And what I'm going to be doing is adding two options to it. Uh, NE. So we talked about N before. What that's going to do is suppress the new line. And what the E will do is allow sort of um, these other special characters that exist. Um, so what I can do with this is a couple of cool things. Um, maybe the first thing I'm going to do is add the um, dash r. And what dash r is is a carriage return. So a little bit about formatting. Um, in Windows, when you hit enter, what you're actually doing is entering two characters. One of them is slash n for new line. And one of them is slash r for carriage return. So think about a typewriter, right? When you were hitting a typewriter, you kind of like um, there's a ding, and then you push the whole thing to the beginning. So what a carriage return is basically doing is where you're 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 moving the cursor back to zero to the start of the line, and new line is where you're just basically like scrolling down one line. Um, in Linux, we basically combine these two things in one command. Um, but the carriage return is going to come in handy right now because I'm just going to use these uh, backward slash R to hopefully uh, improve the formatting just a little bit. So I'm going to write here and I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to try to do this again. And you'll notice, so I'm not moving to a new line. I've cleared the screen. Uh, I'm not moving to a new line each time I'm printing something. Uh, but I am moving to the beginning of that single line. So now this looks a lot more like, uh, you know, a nice countdown timer. Oh, and additionally, there's another thing I'm going to do over here. Um, I'm going to use the same dash E, and I'm going to enter it over here. And there's another kind of cool special character that I can use, and that's an underscore A. So we'll take a look at what that does in just a second. So the dash A that I've used is actually an alarm. Uh, way back in the day, oh, here's about, it's about to go off. Hold on. OK. So you probably didn't hear it, because I'm not sure if I connected my system sounds to OBS, but you definitely saw the uh, message over here. 
Um, what the dash, what the slash A does was uh, basically, you know, beep your computer back in the day. And we still kind of implement that, um, you know, in our terminal over here. Um, and we can still trigger it with using this slash A. Um, so there's a lot of these sort of, you know, hidden characters that we use. Um, and they're, you know, pretty interesting and important to learn about. Now there's one more thing. Uh, you'll notice that when we got to the very end, that zero was there, and we kind of like saw nine zero eight zero seven zero six zero. Uh, that's not great. Let's uh, let's fix that. Now I'm just gonna skip over some of this stuff. Um, this is obviously not something that you need to study for for um, stuff. Um, but basically, what I'm going to be doing here is feeding the date command. Um, a specific time. That specific time is n time minus date. Uh, so like basically n time minus now. And I'm going to, I can specify the format that I want to see it in. Uh, so the way I'm going to do that is with date and the option U. And I'm just going to feed a date like this. I'm going to use ampersand over here. And then after we do this calculation over here, um, I'm going to give it plus H plus M percent percent S. Okay. And let me just take a look and verify I'm getting this right. So yeah, I think I'm getting this right. Let's have a look. I'm going to write this and I'm going to go over here. And so now you notice, um, instead of just getting like uh, that, uh, you know, decimal number of between, you know, whatever, like the number of seconds, um, I can actually put this and format it into a, you know, a nice time with uh, hours, minutes, and seconds. And let me see, I can maybe make that work with other things. So if I do this, we'll get two hours. So that would be good for like, you know, an exam, for example. And I can do stuff like, you know, 10 minutes, and 10 minutes should display properly. Okay. And basically, I think that's going to be the end of this sort of tutorial. Uh, hopefully, you learned some things on the way. Um, if you really feel like it, go ahead and, like, improve on my script here, because I'm sure there's a lot of uh, things I could be optimizing in this loop. Um, but, you know, I'll leave that up to you. You guys can uh, explore. So, uh, thanks for watching.